So of course, .NET standard, the uh, .NET Core, ASP.NET Core, the really cool idea is that you have support for you know, uh, Mac OS and Linux as well as Windows. So I'm going to show you a demo. And since I'm, a, I'm an Azure guy, I'm going to show you a small video that I shot because the whole demo takes like 15 minutes and I really have quite a lot of things to show you. So I condensed it a little bit to five minutes, more or less. And I want to show you how you can create a website, test it locally on Windows, and then publish it to a, Win to a Linux server running on Azure. Okay? And since we are hipsters, after all, we all do JavaScript. Um, I see a few beards here. Okay? No, just kidding. Uh, since we are, uh, you know, I want to show you basically we have really a lot of tooling. We have Visual Studio. We do, we'll do an example in Visual Studio later. We have Visual Studio Code. Here we are going to purely use command line to do that, just because why not? So let's start. And so basically what this video does, first of all, I'm going to create a new folder. Okay, I'm on Windows, right? This is command line on Windows. I could use PowerShell if I prefer. That's fine. Here I'm going to create a new website using Razor. Razor, I'll show you an example later. It's like a way to mix HTML and C Sharp. I'm running that locally. So I just created a new application. It's an empty application using a template and it's running. Cool, now the next step, I'm going to just add all that to Git. Now, not GitHub, right? Git locally at the moment, because I have that tooling. I'm going to commit everything. And then, once it's committed, I'm going to switch to Azure. And I'm going to go in the console, because we have a console running directly in the Azure portal. And here I'm using Bash. I could use PowerShell if I prefer. Why not Bash? And I'm going to create a resource group. So this resource group is going to be where all my resources live. It could be a database. It could be you know, the web application itself, etc. I'm going to put that in Western Europe because this is closer to my users. And then I'm going to go and create an app service plan. App service plan is basically how you want to pay for your web application. I'm going to say how much RAM I need, how much bandwidth I need, how many cores I need. And here I'm going to use one called S1, which is a fairly cheap and simple basic um, SK SKU if you want. And here notice I'm saying is Linux. So I say this web server is going to run Linux. Good. Then I'm going to create the web application itself. It's going to be empty at first. It's going to have just a, like a static HTML page saying there is nothing here. And I'm going to say use the plan that I just created, okay? By the way, all that you can do in Visual Studio if you prefer using you know, user interface and everything. We have multiple tools. And here I'm saying I'm going to use .NET Core 2.0 as a runtime so that I can run on Windows and on Linux independently, and I'm deploying using Git. Okay, again, not GitHub, Git on Azure. So I'm going to go and copy the URL of the remote repo. And then after that, I'm going to go back locally and say, okay, my remote is at this URL, and please push all my files to that. So basically, this model is continuous development, right? I can say, hey, let's do something. I'm going to test, and I'm going to commit to Git, which is automatically going to push to Azure in production, or maybe better in a staging server, you would do that. It's going to push everything to Git. This is a step that typically the first push takes like seven minutes, maybe something like that. So it's quite big, but it takes a while. After that, it's much faster. Here, I, you know, that's a great thing with video editing. You can condense everything. And then I can go on Azure. I can take the remote URL, and then I'm going to test that. And you see that it works exactly the same, but this time it's running on Linux, okay? Now I'm starting Visual Studio Code. I'll show you code a little bit more later. I'm going to just edit something locally. The really cool thing with Visual Studio Code is that you can actually run it on Windows, Linux, and Mac OS. So you can develop on Linux if you want. And then in code, I can directly commit to Git because I have the extensions needed to do that. So I'm going to commit directly from within code. I'm going to push that to my repo, which is here. It's all defined in Git already. And then if I go online and go to the About page, you see that the change was made, OK? So we have here a development experience, which is not exactly what you would expect from Microsoft. First of all, I didn't use an IDE. I used code, but code is like 
you know, it's like Notepad on steroids if you want. It's, uh, it's much better than Notepad, but I mean, it's just a text editor, really. So I didn't use Visual Studio. I could if I wanted to. I use command line to push. I use Bash on the server. It's, you know, it's not really a, uh, a Microsoft product, right? But basically, it does work. Now, if you prefer to use Visual Studio and then do a publish from there, you can as well. So that's um, a cool example. And of course, the advantage of running Linux on Azure, well, there are multiple ones. First of all, it's kind of cheaper. It's, you know, a lot of people run uh, servers on Linux. So you have this experience. If you have IT pro people who are experienced with that, for example, maybe it's easier for them to manage that. Bash is also pretty popular and works pretty well. 